The first thing to notice is that the tower is not round enough at the bottom. So how can we fix that? An easy way to do that, is to first separate the bottom from the top, and work only on the bottom. Then rejoin the two parts later. Select the whole top, and then hide it by pressing the H key. Now select the whole bottom and press P, to separate the selected vertices into another object. Go to Object Mode, select the bottom part, and go back to Edit Mode. Now select just one vertical edge loop. Then invert the selection by pressing Ctrl and the I key. Now delete all selected vertices. Go to Object Mode and snap the cursor to the selection. By doing this the cursor is placed exactly at the object center of the tower. Now go back to edit mode and go to the top view. Select all vertices, and in the spin tool change the step number from 12 to 24. And then spin again. Go back to object mode and join the two objects. Now go back to edit mode, and select each second vertex on the seam between the two object parts. Then go to top view, and rotate the selected ring of vertices around the z-axis, until all vertices match the adjacent vertices of the other object part. You can use the snap tool to ensure that the vertices are located on top of each other. Now select all vertices except the inner loop cut. And rotate the bottom around the z-axis by 7.5 degrees. This gives you a nice rotation symmetric pattern. At the end just remove doubles by using W-6, and you are done. The bottom of the object now looks much less blocky, but still not good enough. And here comes the next trick. Make this object look less blocky by applying smooth to it. No, that was too much. We need something in between, with some sharp edges and some smooth surfaces. So, how can we get this done? The good news is that we can mix solid faces and smooth faces in one object. Go to edit mode. Then locate all face loops for which you want to see sharp edges. And finally mark the faces as sharp, by clicking set solid. The last thing we are doing now is creating a suitable texture for the object. But hold on. We certainly will need a few different textures for the building. The walls can be made out of bricks. Yet we need black bricks and white bricks. The roof of the tower will certainly be a metal material. And the floor of the top platform will be made of stone tiles. So we need to manage all that in an easy way. The answer is, use different materials for the different tower sections. And the good news is that with meshes you can have up to 8 materials, and you can apply up to 8 different textures to one mesh. You just have to assign materials to groups of vertices, and you are almost ready to go. Let us first prepare the 7 needed materials as follows. Go to the shading section and create new materials for White bricks
black bricks. Platform floor. Bottom roof. Top roof. Light section. And antenna. In order to better see the material to face associations you can colorize each material with a different base color. When you are done with the material creation part, proceed with the face to material association. Go to edit mode, and there deselect all vertices. Now go to face select mode, and select all faces which shall get a white brick wall texture. There is one little problem here. We have not yet taken into account that our tower shall be made of black and white bricks. We could create a texture which contains stripes of black and white bricks, and map the texture to the tower. But I will go a different way which will lead to a much better texturizable model. We will create separate faces for the different brick colors. We can use the knife tool for our purpose. Ensure that the black parts of the tower are selected. Press K. Then select knife, exact. A knife appears. Locate a border between black and white bricks on the tower. Then left click. Then drag the mouse to the other side of the tower. Left click again. Your tower is now cut into pieces. Proceed by also cutting along all other black and white seams. When you are done ensure that only the white brick parts are selected. In the edit section assign the current selection to the white brick material. Then hide all selected faces by pressing H. That makes it easier to select the next set. Proceed by selecting all the black brick parts, then select the black bricks material and assign the current selection to that material. Proceed until you have assigned each face section to the corresponding material. Now comes the fun part. We have to texturize our model. But before we do this, we take the time to save our blend file, export the tower as Galata file, and examine our improvements in Second Life. As you can see the material information gets transported with the object. Each material section of the tower gets translated into one separate texture face in Second Life. You can even go to the item editor and change the section colors as you like. And of course you can apply different textures to different faces. This is pretty similar to what you already know from simple prims. But there is one important part yet missing, before we can say that we are done. We will need to create a UV map for our object. 
but in complete opposition to sculpted prims we are now totally free in how we organize the UV texture. We will see that the creation step is very easy. So, back to Blender.